Hello everyone and welcome to our monthly platform basic navigation tutorial. I'm Jan and I will walk you through the basics on how to navigate your online investment account. So before we start, here are some reminders. This tutorial is to provide the basics of navigating your online trading. If you have questions not related to platform navigation, please email them to equities at unicapital-inc.com or course them through our official social media channels. Otherwise, feel free to utilize the comment section below and we will get back to you within 24 hours. This presentation is divided into three discussions. First is the platform navigation, which includes managing your login credentials, the basic features, some exclusive features, and what makes our platform unique compared to some of the online platforms out there, the customization capability. We will also go through the process of adding succeeding funds to your online account, as well as some basic troubleshooting. Alright, let's start off by knowing how to log in to your Utrade account. How do you log in? So the first step that you will need to do is open a web browser. Most of the web browsers available in the World Wide Web support our online trading platform. If you are an Apple user, do not worry because our trading platform works well with Safari. The next step is, in the selected web browser's URL search bar, type in www.utradeph.com and then hit enter. You will then be directed to our Utrade homepage. The next step is in the green box, type there your username, below it, type there your password, and then click the login button. So for successful login attempt, you will be directed to your trading button. For those who are not able to remember their password, what they have to do is that they will need to reset them or have their credentials reset by our team. So to reset your password, you have two options. The first option is by clicking the forgot password. This button is located below the field where you type in your password and then upon clicking, a small green box will pop up. You will then need to provide your username as well as your question to hint or answer to hint. And then afterwards, click submit. So for successful attempts, you will receive an automated email containing further instructions on how to access your account. If you, however, have not assigned a hint yet, if you forgot your answer to hint, or if your account is suspended, then do not worry because you can have your credentials reset by emailing us at equities at unicapital-inc.com. Please use only your registered email address whenever transacting with us to avoid unnecessary inconvenience on your part. In the previous slide, the options are specifically to address the login problems of those who do not remember their login credentials. If you are able to log in but you want to change your passport, password or PIN, then it requires a different process. To change your password, click the My Account menu. So this is located in the right uppermost part of your trading book. Then select Change Password, type there your current password, assign a new password and type them twice. Afterwards, click the Submit button. Okay. So please be reminded that password must be at least 6 alphanumeric characters and should not exceed 16. So when we say alphanumeric, it has to be a combination of letters and numbers. And for successful changing of password, you will be logged out of your online trading account and you will have to log back in using this time your new password in order to continue accessing your account. Changing your PIN will require you to access the My Account PIN again. But this time, select Change PIN. Now, type there your current PIN, assign a new PIN and type them twice for confirmation. Afterwards, click the Submit button. Trading PIN must be exactly a 6-digit number. And the difference between a password and a PIN is that password is needed to access your online account while PIN is required when submitting an order or making a withdrawal request. 
Should you wish to reset your login credentials on your own, you will need at least to have an existing security question answered or hint. To assign or change your hint, simply go to My Account again. This time, click the Change Hint button. Create your own question or choose from four different default options. Below it, type your answer and then click the submit button. Okay, so if you have questions regarding your login credentials, do not hesitate to email us at equities at unicapital-inc.com. So, moving on to the next part of our presentation are what we call the basic features. So, the first basic feature that we will be discussing is the code screen. So, by default, the code screen is located in the leftmost part of your trading hall. If you accidentally close the screen, you can access it again by simply clicking the code icon. So, you might be asking, what is a code screen? A code screen is where you will see the list of all public companies' shares which can be traded in the local exchange. It also provides the performance overview of listed equities in a single trading day. Now that we know that what the code screen is, let us discuss some of the default columns you will see in a code screen. Code is the stock code of a listed company, so for Ayala Land, that's Ali. Symbol is the name of a listed company. Last is the last traded price of a stock. So for Ayala Land, that's 44 pesos and 55 centavos per share. Change is the change in points of a stock in a single trading day. While change percentage is the percentage value of change. Hainaman is the highest registered price of a stock in a single trading day. While low is the lowest registered price of a stock in a single trading day. Value is the total traded amount of a stock in a single trading day. It is computed by multiplying the price and the total number of shares traded for a particular equity. Value can sometimes indicate if a stock is actively traded in the market. Volume naman is the total number of shares of a stock traded in a single trading day. Now, in your code screen, you will be able to sort the stocks by index, recently IPOs, or even stocks that are currently suspended. Listed companies can also be sorted by volume, gain percentage, etc. These are all possible by clicking the down arrow. If you have a specific stock in mind and you find it tedious to go through the whole list, or if you want to search a stock in a faster way, then you may utilize the search bar. Type the code or symbol of the stock, then hit enter, and it will automatically show up the selected equity. Now, if you want to clear all the sorting you did, then click the reset button and the layout will revert to its default setting. Let's proceed now to our next slide. What is a watch list and how do you create one? First, let's define what a watch list is. A watch list is a basic feature of our online platform wherein you will be able to create a list of stocks for whatever purpose it may serve, all selected equities in one screen. So for most, the primary reason of creating a watch list is because uh, they may use it to easily monitor their stocks that they currently hold or those that they want to purchase in the future. So where do you access this feature? Simply click the watch list icon. The next step is choose the drop down option create watch list. Assign a name, type it there, and then click OK to confirm. You will then uh, be prompted that you successfully created one. Now that you are able to create a watch list, the next question is, where do you view it? Simply click the watch list icon again. Choose the drop down option view watch list, and then select the watch list you want to view and click it. Now to add stocks to your watch list, the following slides will teach you how. You have three ways to add a stock. So option one, 
for example, you want to add JFC to your watch list, you will then need to type in the stock code or name in the add stock bar and then click it. Upon doing so, Jollibee Food Corporation will be automatically added to your watch list. Another way, and for example, you also want to add another stock, let's say Ali, you will have to hover your mouse pointer over to a stock symbol or code, right click it, and choose the drop down option Add to Watch List. Afterwards, choose the watch list where you want to add the stock to and click Add. And then you will notice Ali was successfully added to. Option 3 requires you to drag the selected stock to your watch list. So upon doing so, you will notice that it will be added. Now you can add up to 30 stocks per watch list and create as much watch list as you please. Now that you learned the ways to add stocks, how do you remove them naman? Let's say you want to remove ICT from your list. That is possible by, in your watch list screen, click the edit button. It is located right beside the add stock bar. Now click the, rec click the red box before the stock code you wish to remove. And then confirm by choosing yes. You will then notice na ICT was successfully removed from your watch list. Now click again the edit button to remove the red boxes. This slide will teach you how to manage your watch list month. So how do you rename your existing watch list? Again, go to watch list icon and click it. This time, choose the drop down option rename watch list. Assign a new name and then click OK. Now, how do you delete your existing watch list demand? Go to watch this icon again. Choose the drop down option delete watch list. Select the watch list you want to delete and then confirm by clicking yes. Now, moving on to our next topic is what we call the market debt. What is a market debt and where do you access it? A market debt is where you will see the willing buyers and sellers of a specific stock. It also gives you the idea of how liquid a selected stock is. So, in, uh, to be able to access this feature, simply go to stock info icon and then click it. Now, choose the option market debt. Now, if you already have a specific stock in mind and you want to see its market debt, then type in the stock code or symbol over there and then click it. Alright, now in our uh, U-Trade platform, there are up to 20 levels of market depth. Let's go through the columns that you will see in a market depth. Bid are what we call the willing buyers. Buy quantity naman are the total shares the buyers are willing to purchase at a specified price. As on the other hand are the willing sellers. As quantity are the total shares the sellers are willing to offer at a specified price. Hashtag naman are the total number of buyers or sellers queued at a specific level. Now, how do you read this? Let's start by going to the bid side. There are a total of 5 willing buyers queued at 608 pesos per share with a total shares of 130. Going to the ask side naman, we had a sole seller queued at 617 pesos per share with a total offering shares of 200. Okay, if you have further clarifications regarding our market debt, feel free to comment them below or you may email us at equities at unicapital-inc.com. Okay, so if you are looking for a specific data of an equity and you could not find it in your code screen, then you will have to access another basic feature in your online account. So if you wish to get more information about a certain stock, you may go to a stock info screen. So in a stock info screen, again, you can conveniently acquire more basic information on a selected equity. So where do you access this? Simply go to stock info icon again and click it. But this time, 
choose the drop down option stock info or tracker now if you have a specific stock in mind and then you want to get more information about it simply type in the symbol or code of the stock and then click it now a stock info screen or a stock info consists of the following the left part is what we call the info as I mentioned a while ago it is where you will see the basic information of a selected stock right beside it is what we call an intraday chart it is where you will see the price movement of an equity in a single trading day also in stock info tracker you will be able to access the time in sales it is okay this is a real-time data feed of trades order for a chosen stock showing the price volume names of brokers and time for each completed trade all right so if you have questions regarding our stock info feature please comment them below or again post them through our official social media channels moving on to our next topic is what we call the board lot table what is a board lot table and where do you find it so let's first define what a board lot table is a board lot table is a standardized number of shares set by the Philippine Stock Exchange based on a given price range for a stock. In other words, it dictates the minimum number of shares that can be bought or sold. So where do you find the board lot table? Simply go to Stock Info icon and select the board lot table option. Okay, our board lot table is composed of the price range, which is the minimum and maximum price. The tick size or price fluctuation, which is the allowed price step based on a given price range for a stock. And the board lot itself, which indicates the minimum number of shares that can be or that you can buy or sell. Now let's do some quick exercise so that you will understand it all. Example number one, stock is trading at 160 pesos per share. So which uh, price range do you think example number one will fall under? What is its fluctuation and what is the minimum number of shares that can be bought or sold if you answered 100 to 199.9 then you are correct it has a fluctuation of 0 0.1 which means you can set the price to let's say 160.10 160.20 or even 155.90 it also it also has a board lot of 10 and in multiples of 10, which means uh, it could be um, 10, 20, 30, or even 1,090. Okay, let's do another example. Stock is trading at 5 pesos and 28 centavos per share. So what do you think is the answer? If you answered 5 to 9.99, then you are correct. It has a fluctuation of 0 0.01 centavos. And a board lot of 100. Let's do another example. Stock is trading at 1,050 pesos per share. So what do you think is the answer? You are correct. It falls under the 1,000 to 1,999 um, price range and it has a fluctuation of a peso and a board lot of 5. Okay, if you need further clarifications regarding our board lot table, feel free to email us at equities at unicapital-inc.com. Okay, the next basic feature available in your youth or, or in your online account is what we call a stock chart. So what is a stock chart and where do you access it? A stock chart is a set of information on a particular equity that generally shows information about price changes, current trading price, historical highs and lows, and trading volume among others. It is used by chartists for their trading decisions. So where do you access the stock chart? Simply go to chart icon and click it. Now, you can choose from two drop-down options, intraday and analysis. So an, an intraday chart, as I mentioned in the previous slide, provides you the visual graph on how a stock moves in a single trading day. On the other hand, an analysis chart is a more comprehensive type of chart 
because you can see the past price movement depending on the time horizon you set. There are also a lot of chart indicators that you can choose from. Now, charting is discussed by our skilled technical analyst. Schedule of our next basic technical analysis webinar is usually posted on our official or exclusive YouTube FB page, so please make it a habit to visit our page once in a while. Okay, so if you've come to the point where you are already decided which equities to buy, then the following slides will teach you the step-by-step -step on how to purchase shares of an equity. So how do you buy shares of a stock? You have four options. The first option is by utilizing the buy icon. So when you click the buy icon, a buy order ticket screen will pop up. Another way is by right-clicking the code or symbol of a stock and then by choosing the drop-down option, Buy. Upon doing so, the same ticket screen will pop up. Now, in your code screen, if you double-click the code or symbol of a stock, then the same ticket will appear. And lastly, by default, when you click the F1 button in your keyboard, then the same process will follow. So, the last option or the option 4 is actually an exclusive feature of your online account. We will further discuss this in the latter part of the presentation, so make sure you finish the recording. Okay, your order ticket screen is composed of the market depth, order fields, and the order summary. It, it, it is also color-coded, so for buying, it is green. For selling naman, it is red, while for revising or canceling, it is black. Okay, now that you know the different ways to access the buy ticket screen, the next step would be filling out the order details. So let us start with the trade limit. So this field shows the monetary amount that you can use to buy shares of an equity. This is also known as your buying power. Below it shows your account code and name. Going further down is what we call the stock field. This is where your selected stock is shown. So right off the bat, you will be able to change the company by typing in the code or symbol. You also have here the action field where it shows the type of the transaction. Right beside it is the order type which by default is limit. Below the action field is the quantity field where you will have to indicate the number of shares you have to purchase. Right beside it is the price field. It is where you will need to indicate the target price of your buy order. So you may utilize the down arrow or type your desired price. Another field that you will need to fill out is the validity. So this indicates the validity of your order and you have four options to choose from. The first option is, is what we call the day validity order. It is a type of limit order wherein if the shares are not matched within a single trading day, then at the end of the day, it will be automatically cancelled. Another validity we have is what we call the fill and kill. This is a type of limit order naman wherein it is executed by filling the order with the number of shares that the first bid or offer makes available. Then, any unfilled balance of shares would be cancelled. So let's say you would like to post a buy order with a target price of let's say uh, 5 pesos per share and with a total shares of 1,000. Now on the seller side, there are actually sellers queued at your target price which is 5 pesos per share but with only 500 shares. Now, if you post your order and it matches with the sellers, then the ownership of the 500 shares from the sellers will be transferred to you and then the remaining 500 shares in your, or in your order will be cancelled. So in that context, the FAK is a way for you to fill what is possible then cancel the rest. Another option we have is what we call the good till cancelled. 
So, it is a type of limit order wherein it stays active in the market unless it is manually cancelled. And lastly, we have the good till date or GTD. It is a type of limit order naman that is active until its specified date. So, if you have any questions regarding this slide, feel free to comment them below. In your order ticket screen, you also have the skip confirmation and this icon options. Okay, so once you completely fill out all the required fields, type your trading pin and click buy. Now, if your um, skip confirmation is unchecked, then a confirmation window or screen will pop up. You will then need to click OK to confirm your transaction and then it will be automatically submitted. Assuming that you successfully submitted a buy order, the next question you may be asking yourself is, was it queued? Was it filled? So in order to check the status of your submitted orders, go to order book icon and click it. Then choose the drop down option equities order book. Then the selected screen will pop up. Below are the different order statuses for your information. So pending release is an order status that was accepted by the system and will be posted in the exchange the next trading day. So kindly note that the Philippine Stock Exchange Central Book Central Order Book only accepts orders when the market is open. Fortunately though, you do not have to wait for the market to open as our online platform can accept orders even if the market is closed. Your order which was submitted during off-market hours will stay with the platform and will be submitted as soon as the local market opens. Another order status that we have is what we call the queued. It is an order status that was successfully submitted to or posted in the local exchange and is a waiting match. Replace the man is an order status wherein an existing order has been successfully revised. So if you have an existing queued order and you revised it, then the order status will be updated to replaced. Partially filled is an order status where an order has been partially matched, while filled the man is an order status where an order has been fully matched. We also have the cancelled uh, status. This is self-explanatory. So, it is an order status where an existing order has been manually cancelled. Rejected demand is an order status that was not accepted by our system as the order details were invalid. So, for example, you were not able to follow the minimum requirement. Then you will most probably have a rejected status due to invalid board lot. Another example is when you do not have enough cash to cover the purchase costs. Then again, you will probably see a rejected status as you will not be able to make another order without sufficient funds. Expired is an order status where an active day or good till date order expired. And lastly, we have the unplaced order status. It is when a GTC or good till cancelled order set price goes beyond the ceiling or floor of a certain stock. Alright, so if you have further clarifications or if you have any questions regarding this slide, feel free to comment them below. Now that you know the status of your order and suddenly you had a change of mind and you want to revise your pending order, you may do so by, in your equities order book screen, hover your mouse pointer over to the symbol or code of the stock, right click, and choose the option revise. And then the um, revised order ticket screen will pop up. You may also double click it and then the same ticket screen will appear. The next step is change the order details as necessary so you can change the quantity, price, or even the validity type. Next is type your trading pin, hit the revise button, and click OK to confirm. Please note that you will not be able to revise orders with queued status during off-market hours, the last 15 minutes of the pre-open state, 
and the last two minutes of the pre-close date of the market. Okay, the process of canceling your order is pretty much the same with revising your pending order. In equities order book screen, hover your mouse pointer over to the symbol or code of the stock, right click and then this time choose the cancel option. Next step is type there your trading pin, hit the cancel button, and then click OK to confirm. Okay, so for successful order cancellations, you will notice that your current order status, for example, queued, was changed to canceled. So, pwede rin pong replaced and it will be updated to canceled. Note, however, that you will not be able to cancel orders with queued status in the last 15 minutes of the pre-open state and the last 2 minutes of the pre-close state of the market. Okay, moving on to our next topic. Sometimes companies give out stock dividends to its shareholders. Thus, this will most likely result to excess shares that unfortunately cannot be traded in a normal board lot. This is when the odd lot will come into play. What is then an odd lot? An odd lot is an order amount for an equity that is less than the minimum shares defined in the board lot. So ito yung tinatawag nating tingi-tingi na shares. So where do you access this? Okay, in your code screen, hover your mouse pointer over to the normal board lot and click it. Next, choose or select the normal odd lot option. And then, once you do that, the code screen will be updated. Now, the main difference between the uh, board lot and the odd lot is that for odd lot, there is an appended semicolon and capital O. Now, Right-click the code or symbol of the stock in your normal odd lot screen and choose the drop-down option by or sell. So depending sa transaction yun. Now, fill out the order details in the order ticket screen just like how you fill out the details in a normal board lot. Okay, so if you have any questions regarding uh, this slide, feel free to comment them below. Okay. Note, however, that odd lot orders can only be posted during continuous trading phase of the market. Okay, so for buy orders that were filled, shares and other pertinent details will reflect on your portfolio. What is then an equity stock portfolio? It is a collection of equity investment in the stock market where your equity shares are reflected and compiled in one window. So, to access your portfolio, simply go to Portfolio icon and click it. Then choose the drop-down option, Equities Portfolio. Now, let's go through the default columns that you will see in an equity portfolio screen. Code and, sim uh, code and symbol were already discussed in the previous slides. Quantity on hand refers to the total number of shares you own for a specific equity. Average buy price naman refers to the median price of all completed buy orders for a specific stock. Last and market value, uh, we assume na alam yun na rin yan. Unrealized gain or unrealized loss or aka paper gain or paper loss. So it is a value used to determine if you will incur loss or gain profit should you sell it at market price. We also have the unrealized gain or unrealized loss percentage. This is the percentage value of unrealized gain or unrealized loss. Below is where we, where we will see the total market value. Now, it refers to the total monetary value of all the stocks you currently have, excluding cash. Right beside it is what we call the total gain or total loss. This just refers to the total unrealized gain or total unrealized loss of your portfolio. Okay, now that you know how to buy shares, how to check the status of your order, and you know where to locate your portfolio, 
this time naman, for example, you need to liquidate your shares because maybe you need extra cash or whether you are satisfied with your um, current um, paper gains or unrealized gains. Now, how do you sell them? So just like in buying, we also have four ways of selling your shares. So the first way is by utilizing the sell icon. So when you click it, a sell ticket screen will pop up. Another way is by right-clicking the code or symbol of a stock and then by choosing the drop-down option, sell. And upon doing so, the same ticket screen will appear. Okay, in your equities portfolio screen, when you double-click the code or symbol of a stock, the same ticket screen will pop up. Now, in your code screen, if you double-click the symbol or code of a stock, the buy order ticket screen will pop up. On the other hand, if you double-click in the equities portfolio screen naman, then the sell order ticket screen will pop up. So please take note of that. Or for that's for your reference. And lastly, by default, when you click the F2 button in your keyboard, the same process will follow. Okay, just fill out the order details in your sell ticket screen just like how you fill them out when making a buy order. Moving on to our next topic, did you know that you have 24-7 access to the exclusive research products on your online account, making it easier for you what shares to buy and when to sell? So what are these and where can you find them? But first, let's find out where to access the research screen. Simply go to News icon and click it. Then select the drop-down option View Trade Research. Now filter as necessary. And when you're okay with your uh, filters, hit the search button. Then click the title of your chosen research product and it will automatically download as a PDF file. The available research products are, first is what we call the on target. It is a daily research material that is based on fundamental analysis. This is best suited for middle to long term investors. Trader's Game Plan, on the other hand, is another daily research material that is based on technical analysis, which is perfect for short to middle term investors. Naman. Special Report is another research material based on fundamental and technical analysis, which is usually uploaded on a weekly basis. And lastly, we have the Primer. It is also a research report provided by our competent research analyst specifically for initial public offerings. So on target and traders game plan are also being sent via email on a daily basis. So if you do not receive them via email, please inform us through equities at unicapital-inc.org. Okay, so you might also want to check PSE Edge. It is a fully automated system that facilitates the efficient processing, validation, submission, distribution, and analysis of time-sensitive disclosure reports submitted by uh, listed companies to our local exchange. PSE Edge offers multiple channels to disseminate disclosures to investors, data providers, the media, and other stakeholders. Recently declared dividends can be seen here as well as other important disclosures. So be one of the first to be updated by visiting this site regularly. Okay, so another basic feature that you will see when you first log into your account is what we call the ticker tape or ticker. What is a ticker? And where do you access it? So, a ticker is where you will see the real-time done transactions in the local market. So, if you accidentally removed it, you may access it again by simply going to the market icon and clicking it. Then, by selecting the drop-down option ticker. Okay, so you can customize it by applying filters and changing the ticker flow. 
Okay, so do you know that you can access your statement of account online? Convenient, right? By the way, for those who do not know what a statement of account is, a statement of account is where you find your buy and sell transactions. So in short, account transactions. This includes summary of your holdings, running cash balance, and as well as your cash ins and withdrawals. Dividends will also reflect on your statement of account. So to access this feature, go to the statements icon and click it. Then click the drop down option statement of account. Now, you will have the option to download your annual SOAS and monthly SOAS. Just click the hyperlink and it will download the selected file. Another account transaction that you will be able to view and download straight from your online investment account is what we call a buy or sell invoice. So what is a buy and sell invoice? It contains the details of your purchase or sale transactions. This is also where you will find the fees, taxes you incurred, and other remunerations for your completed trades. So to access these files, simply go to uh, statements icon again and click it. But this time, click the purchase and sales invoice. Now click the hyperlink to download the file. Okay, now you might be wondering what are the differences of a statement of account and an invoice. So, for statement of account, it contains the details of one or more transactions depending on the coverage, while invoice contains the details of a specific issues transaction. So, what includes running balance and stock positions? While an invoice includes breakdown of charges and fees. Okay, statement of account is uploaded annually and monthly, while invoice is uploaded per issue or per transaction. But both can be downloaded by. Okay, we are done with part 2 of our presentation. So before we proceed to the next part, I would like to remind everyone to comment your questions below or if there are things that are not clear or need further clarification, please do not hesitate to let us know. Now, as previously mentioned, we will also run through the exclusive features that come with your online account. Let's start with the Trade Calculator. So what is a Trade Calculator? It is an exclusive feature available in your UTrade account which could come in handy as this will show you the possible gain or possible loss should you sell it at a specific price. So where do you access this feature? Go to the calculator icon, then select the drop down option, trade calculator. Now, how do you fill out the details or the columns in your trade calculator? First, type there the code or symbol of the stock, then click it. Next, indicate the number of shares. Afterwards, key in the buy and sell price. Upon doing so, the rest of the columns will be automatically filled out. Now, you will also be able to identify the break-even selling price and the summary of the charges and fees you will incur without having to make an actual order. So this is possible by clicking the document icon. Okay, so if you were able to liquidate your shares and you would like to pull the cleared or the cleared funds out of your account, the process will only take less than 5 minutes. There is also no need to physically go to our office as you can conveniently do it online from the comforts of your home. To access this feature of our investment account of, or for of your investment account and to make a and to make a withdrawal request, simply go to the services icon and click it. Then select or choose the drop down option withdrawal. Next is click the withdrawal request button. Then enter the amount there. Afterwards, click the submit button. Now to view the status of your uh, submitted withdrawal request, go to the withdrawal screen and click the withdrawal history button. 
you will then see the status of your withdrawal. A pending status means that your withdrawal request has been accepted by the system and is awaiting approval from our operations team. An approved status demand means that your request has been acknowledged by our settlements team and the process is underway. While a rejected status means that your request was either cancelled per your request or the details were invalid. Also, you will be able to make a withdrawal request right off the bat by clicking the plus sign withdrawal request. Now, things to remember when making a withdrawal. The minimum withdrawable amount is 500 pesos. Next is ensure that you have an existing and valid bank account registered with us before requesting one. This is to avoid unnecessary delays on your part. If you are not sure what bank account you nominated, email us for assistance. If you, however, have not nominated one, kindly provide the details via email. And please take note that the name of the bank account holder must be the same with your new trade account. The cutoff time for requests is 11 a.m. and requests received beyond that time will be processed the next business day. Note that banks other than BPO, BPI, or China Bank will have additional one clearing day. This is very important. Please take note of this as well. A selling proceed can only be withdrawn one day after the sale transaction. This is because the amount will reflect on cash one day after the sale transaction. So, for example, on March 16, your trade limit and cash balance are the same. Then during the day, you decide to sell some of your shares. The sold proceeds or the proceeds amounted to 5,000 pesos and will initially reflect on your trade limit. You will only be able to withdraw it a day after the transaction date which is March 17 and when it has reflected on your cash balance. This is because when requesting for withdrawal, your cash balance should be the basis for the amount as this is considered the cleared fund. So if you have any questions or concerns regarding your withdrawal request, feel free to reach out to us. Now let's quickly run through the other exclusive features available on your online investment account. First is what we call the SIP or the Stock Investment Program. This is an exclusive U-Trade feature and is a great way for beginners and long-term investors to participate in the stock market. It uses a peso cost averaging or it uses peso cost averaging proven to be smarter and better alternative than keeping your money in the bank. With automatic feature, it is perfect for investors who do not have time to monitor their portfolio. Now, SIP has a separate recording. Details on the upcoming SIP webinar are available on our official social media channels, so do not forget to visit them. Hey, there is also a reason why I use the term investment account. This is because your online account is not limited to equities as you will also have access to another investment vehicle called mutual funds. You can conveniently subscribe to 40 plus mutual funds available in the Philippines using the same online account. Alright, and that caps off the part B of our presentation, reminding everyone again to comment down your questions or course them through our social media channels. Moving on to part 4 of our presentation, the following slides will walk you through the steps on how to do basic customization on your online account. Starting with the layout of your trading hall. To change it, go to settings icon and click it. Then under the layout tab, choose from 12 different layout options. So you can have a one window layout, a two window layout, or even a five window layout. By default, your trading hall has a three window layout. Now, you can also choose between opening a new screen as a pop-up or as a new tab. And when you're okay with your selection, just click the apply button and it will save the changes you made. You will also be able to customize the user interface of your account. To do so, go back to the settings icon, 
but this time click the UI tab now you can choose from two different themes you can also choose your preference whether it is unit or lot you can also decide whether your news or chart screen will open inside or open as a new tab and you will be able to turn on or turn off the alternate row shading as well and once you're okay with the selection just click apply and the changes will be saved this is what the dark theme will look like while this is what the light theme will look like Come on. okay customizing the font is also possible just go to settings icon and click the font tab you can adjust the size of your font by clicking the up or down arrow you can also choose the font type you want so you have eight options there and you can as well assign colors to price change if you wish to change back to the original setting just click the default button otherwise click the apply button and the selection you made will be saved if you could still remember while we were discussing ways to purchase shares of a stock I did mention one exclusive feature of our online account this is what we call the hotkeys feature so what is hotkeys hotkeys is an exclusive a utrade feature wherein it allows the user to execute specific functions with just a click so by default there are already keys assigned to, to execute specific tasks however if you wish to customize them then go to again settings icon and click the hot key tab. now right off the bat you'll be able to enable or disable the or this feature now to customize specific function click it and then the selected function will show the current hotkey in the current mapping now assign a new mapping by typing in control or alt or shift plus the new key so for example you would like to change the function by from f1 to let's say control plus b as in bravo or alt plus b or even shift plus b and once you're okay with the changes click the apply button or if you wish to change back to its default keys just click the default button the following slides will show you some of the ways to customize specific screens in your code equities portfolio or even order book screen you can add or remove columns to add a new column just click any column in the screen select columns then tick the box of the data you want to add so in our example i wanted to add 52 week high doing so will add the selected column to the screen to remove a column the process is the same you just need to untick this time no the column you want to remove from the screen you can also rearrange the columns by simply dragging them to left or right. Moving on to our next slide, you can manage your layout by converting it into a pop-up. Click the icon shown in our slide and then the selected screen will pop up. Click the Manda icon right beside it and it will maximize the selected screen. Now, when a screen is in pop-up state like the one you are seeing in our slide, then you will be able to select the window you want it to be included in. Just drag the pop-up screen to the selected window and it will be part of that window. Just don't forget to click the floppy disk to save the changes you made. In your code screen, you have two different view types, list and card. So by default, the screen is in list view. To choose the card view, click the button next to the list button. Now, you may further customize your card view by clicking the settings button. You can then increase or decrease the columns and rows by clicking the up or down arrow. Do not forget to click the disk button to save the changes you made. And that ends the part 4 of our presentation. If you have any questions, please comment them below. Now before we end the webinar, let us quickly go through the ways to add additional funds to your online account. 
So for over-the-counter deposits or online bank transa transactions, please use the um, bank details you're seeing in your screen. For BDO OTC deposits, please indicate your account code as your reference number. Furthermore, do not forget to provide a copy of your deposit slip or any proof of online fund transaction for immediate crediting of funds. You may also add additional fund via GCash and via PayMaya. You can also top up your account by going to any MDWillier branch near you. Just fill up their transaction slip and use your account code as your reference number and you trade or Uni Capital Securities Inc. as the biller. Please take note that service fees are to be charged by MDWillier and will be on top of your deposited amount. Also, fees may vary depending on the amount to be transferred. So let's quickly go through the basic uh, troubleshooting. First is always check your internet connection and ensure that you are connected to the internet and have stable connection. Again, our website is www.utradeph.com. If you are being kicked out of your online account more often than the usual, please try clearing your brow browsing history or cache and utilize other web browsers. Or log out, reboot, restart your computer, then log back in. If these do not work, please email us at equities at unicapital-inc.com and include a screenshot of the error you're getting. For any questions or concerns, you know where to email us. You may also call our hotline numbers. Like and follow us on our official social media channels for news and updates. And that concludes our presentation. We hope you learned something and thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day everyone.